right? No, uh, my father, he had a bar my whole life. He owned a bar in New Jersey where I grew up, um, right across the George Washington Bridge. Um, and also worked for the construction union. So he had two jobs my whole life. If it were up to him, I would be a receptionist in a construction union office somewhere. I would not be owning a bar, but I chose this path. <laughs> your nails would be a lot longer and the hoops on your earrings would be a lot bigger. If that was and I still got the big hoops. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fully take the jersey out of the girl, all right? Uh, they're perfectly sized. <laughs> they would just be a lot bigger if you had that That's job. True. And they might have my name in the middle. I don't know. But Facts. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we also have the handsome Jonathan Sadowski. So what is up, Tommy? Such a handsome gentleman this guy is. Uh oh, so, keep coming. So Jonathan and I actually met on set. If you could tell the, the striking resemblance <laughs> of us. Um, I was Jonathan's stunt double out when I, my brief time in LA and uh, we met this guy named Quentin and he took our whole story and he made that awesome movie called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So there it is. That's, that's how Jonathan and I know each other. <laughs> but, uh, well, wait, but, we met, where, where did we meet? Was it at Whiskey Blue? We got at Whiskey Park, 59th and 6th. Yeah. So, so Jonathan is an awesome, awesome human being. He's a Chicago native, as you could tell. And I love to nerd out about booze all the time. And he was one of the few people that came in that admired the whiskey selection. And we talked whiskey for hours. <laughs> we really did, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was staying, uh, I was in New York and I was doing a film and I was staying at the New York Athletic Club. Uh, or New York Athletic Association. Yep, right down the club. Yeah, right down the right block from us. And so like the whiskey park was like my go-to. And I went in there and it was like dead. I was by myself. I walked in and, and I meet this handsome Italian guy. And we, we, and we talked whiskey and here we are, what, eight years later, nine years later? Absolutely. It's, it's a hell of a run. It's a hell of a run. We've lasted longer than most marriages. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold on with that one as well. <laughs> I still got... <laughs> Love you, Ash, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Ash. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I just, um, Jonathan, you come from a booze background. You're a hospitality cat as well. And um, Alyssa being the industry baby, um, I wanted to see, showcase you guys and showcase different parts of the industry and who could come up to your bar stool, Mr. Jonathan Sadowski. And you wouldn't know that. He was an actor, the star of Young and Hungry. You wouldn't know that he was a fisherman, that he was a competitor on Chopped and had this entire crazy resume. You would just see a good looking guy in a Chicago Bears hat. So I would love to know, Alyssa, what you would go ahead and serve Jonathan when he came up to your bar. All right, so today what I'm gonna make for you, we're gonna begin with Overproof Wyoming whiskey bourbon. Woo. I feel like you might be an overproof guy, Jonathan. I don't know. I got, I got a feeling. So I, we're going to begin with that. Barrel-proof stuff. There you go. 100 proof. So what are we talking? Is it 100, 101? It's 100, What's that? It's 100 proof on the nose. It's 100 proof. Wow. Bottled and bond. It is you got to start off with a bang. It's a burr rock. Exactly. And then I have some peach shrub that I make here, homemade, which is super easy to do. It's just equal parts vinegar and sugar and a whole bunch of peaches. You let that sit for a week, and it comes out really bright and beautiful and acidic. Uh, oh, now my phone is... You still see me? Yes, ma'am. All right, we're going to go half an ounce of that. And then just for some balance, we're going to use some dried vermouth. So it's sort of a twist on a Manhattan, if you will. I like that. I like the peach. That's fun. I'm sorry? So I like the peach. That's fun. I love a shrub. I'm somebody who likes to drink my own salad dressing. So I love anything that has like um, a vinegar flavor to it that I can put in a cocktail. Awesome. What's that's that? It. What's because salad? Yeah. No, good. that's it. Thing too because you don't see a lot of cocktails with too much of, you know yeah no absolutely i mean i've put balsamic vinegar in cocktails um 
it, it's not something that's always for the general public, but most of the menu I'll make for what other people like to drink, and then sometimes I do a drink for myself, and that would have vinegar in it. Well, I'll tell you what, you're good at what you do, because this is like me in a nutshell. Super strong whiskey. Really? <laughs> All right, there you go. I knew already. Any, like me. <laughs> I love that. What's your what's your go to spirit, Jonathan? What do you like drinking? I'm a whiskey guy. Uh, always a whiskey guy. I collect whiskeys and I collect scotches. And uh, although you know, recently I've been on this big gin kick. Uh, I find gin like in, in really hot days and stuff like that. I find gin to be a pretty refreshing go to spirit. Negroni is always my go to cocktail. I love gin. Oh yeah, we had a few Negronis when I was in New York. Uh, when we were at the, uh, what was it? We were at the Standard. Standard, yes, absolutely. Yeah, we had a couple of Negronis there. A couple two tree. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of everything, I believe. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. There you go. Cheers. Ooh, Salute. Lovely. Cheers. Thank you very well, much. I mean, if I have to. Well, I mean... <laughs> So what do you call that cocktail? You know what? I don't have a name for it. I think it should be called the Sidowski from now on. Oh, I think it is now. And but I'm now you have to promise to come and drink it once I reopen. Pinky, uh, Pinky, I will. There you go. You there you what? go. Perfect. I promise that the first bar I go to when I go to New York yeah. will be All right. The All right. I will order, hold you and to I'm that. Going to order, I'm going to order my namesake. <laughs> I will have Tommy hunt you down if you don't like, if you don't actually do it. And you What's know he's a boxer. Artist? You know he's a boxer. <laughs> What's hey. the name of the bar? It's called August Laura. It's actually my grandfather's name. August Laura. August Laura. Like the I month would... and the girl's name. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. And I love I that know. story too, Alyssa. Can you tell what? us the story about your about it being named after your father grandfather and like your family? Your, how you put your yes. Foot? Sorry to cut you so, off. <laughs> where are you there? Oh, so um, the first August Laura that I owned was in Brooklyn in Carroll Gardens. And when I brought, I didn't have a name for the bar yet. I was just looking at spaces. And when I brought my parents over to take a look at the space, my mom just looked at me and was like, do you even like realize where you are? And I was like, no. And she's like, well, you used to play in that park. And this is where grandpa grew up. And my grandfather passed away the day before my third birthday, so I didn't really get to know him. But he was a councilman in Jersey, and I always remember there was this plaque that my mom had that had the name August Laura. And growing up, I always remember just looking at that and feeling connected with him. So when my mom said that to me when we were standing in our space, it was just one of those things that clicked. I was like, that's it. That's the name. Like, this is what I'm going to do with it. That's super awesome. I love it. I, love it. I, I always love when names mean something too. You know, if you can tie it into a, an emotion or a, related to a family, uh, family experience, I, I think, you know, just, just when you have, when you have depth to an establishment, I think exactly. that like, you, can't, you can't substitute that kind of value. Absolutely. And that was something that just fell into place. I didn't even expect that to be the thing. You know, my mom's just looking at me like, really? Like, you, and I was like, holy shit, that's it. That's it. And yeah. everything after that just kind of kept falling into place. Yeah. When you know. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't I said, hear it very well. When you know, you know. When you know, you know. Exactly. Exactly. So. And Jonathan, you, you come, obviously you were saying you're from the south side of Chicago and you come from some blue collar notes as well. Um, obviously, you have earned success uh, throughout your career, but you are also a industry baby, right? You, you were behind the bar for a little bit as well, right? I was behind the bar for a lot of it. Excellent. Um, <laughs> yeah. I kind of grew up, um, I, I always make a joke about it, but like at family parties and stuff, my uncle Frano would would have me behind the bar with him, like a little five-year-old kid, like learning how to mix drinks, you know, and like pouring scotches, like in J&Bs for my, my, my other uncles and stuff. And, uh, and then uh, I'll never forget, there was this local bar, and I'm from this neighborhood called Bridgeport in the south side of Chicago. And there's this bar, and uh, I went there for my 21st birthday. And the bartender, Karen Moy, said, Jonathan, how old are you now? And I said, 21. And she goes, 
I've been serving you for six years. <laughs> <laughs> so which bar is it though? It's closed now. It's it's crazy. It used to it was a funeral home. It was Coletta's funeral home before it became yeah. this bar called Ethel's Party. And uh, it's been closed for years now. But then, you know, when I went to college, uh, you know, the bar age at University of Illinois, I was 19. So <laughs> I, started, uh, I started bartending when I was 19 years old at like bars and stuff. Um, came out to LA. I bartended at rock and roll bars. I bartended at the famous Three Clubs, which is still open in Hollywood. Um, I bartended at Nancy Silverton and Mark Peel's restaurant, Campanile, which was the number one restaurant in the country at the time. It won the James Beard Award. So I kind of run the gamut from, you know, high end to super gritty. Uh, but I just, I love, I love being separated by a couple feet of, of wood and, and sharing a drink with somebody. It's just, you know, you, you, like Tommy said, you never know who you're going to meet. Um, you never, like every, every time you walk into work, it's an adventure. You know, you have no idea what you're in store for. Well, you may or may not be happy to know it's moved a few blocks down, but Cam's is back. In Get out of here. <laughs> No way. I don't believe it. It is. I was there on an account call in uh, February, I want to say. It's back. They just reopened. Oh, that's insane. That's insane. Yeah, I had a ton of friends that worked at CAMs and CEOs. So in college, I bartended at, uh, I was at Bub's and I was at Joe's Brewery. Joe's is still there. Joe's too. is still there. <laughs> but CAMs was dirty. Oh, it, it, yeah. It, I mean, it's weird because it smells clean and it's brand new it had only been open like two weeks when I was there. And I'm like, this place is going to smell like cams in like a month. <laughs> Just urine everywhere. <laughs> and stale beer. Crazy. It's crazy to think, you know, to, when you think about it, like the survival of a bar and you look at these college bars and they're like, I remember when I was going to school, they were charging, it was like 50 cent pitchers of beer, you know, yeah. with like a $3 cover charge. And they're like, how are these places staying open? And it's just the volume of people that come to the door. It was they're, not. They're still doing like $2 wells in champagne. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, I remember like a high-end double was like six bucks when I was, when I was like, like a double Grey Goose was like six bucks. And you're like, whoa, that, that's super expensive, man. This is a college bar. And then you go and you like graduate. And you're like, no, that is definitely a college bar. <laughs> I, I love it. You were like slinging behind those like blue collar, rough and tough bars. That's fantastic. Oh yeah, um, it's the best. What, and I so love when I was bartending. I'll never forget when I was bartending at Joe's. It was this happy hour, and there was this old Russian dude who would always come into the bar, and he introduced me to picklebacks. Uh, you know, because he would like shake, yes. you, shake <laughs> super hard pour it in a shot glass, and he would literally order, like, like nine shots of vodka, shake them all up, pour it in a cup, and he'd order a bowl of pickles. And he would just, like, sip his vodka pickles. And he was there, like, all the time. And then he introduced me to the Chili Willy, which I've never heard of. <laughs> which, but if you take a rocks glass and you put it upside down, there's a little divot in the back of the glass. So you shake a, uh, some vodka hard over ice, and you pour it in the divot, and you snort it. <laughs> no, this is the thing. I wish Larry was on. My trainer does this from the Can boxing gym. It? Are you serious? I yeah. swear on my life, this is my yeah. trainer Ryan from Champs Boxing does this. Wait, yeah. you snort what? What part do you yeah. snort? Exactly. Base? That's what I'm confused you pour about. The like, snort, we're it, snorting the liquor now? Yes. And then I mean, you put it in front and you snort the vodka out of the glass. I <laughs> never understood picklebacks because I thought I, I like whiskey. What I don't like pickles, like a pickle juice. Why would I want to destroy the flavor of this wonderful whiskey with this pickle juice? And now you just even blew my mind more. Why would you want to snort vodka? <laughs> <laughs> like people, people do a lot of stupid shit. Um, but myself <laughs> included. Yes. <laughs> so I always me too. The me too. <laughs> I learned how to do that with. Uh, with it was just eat you would you would do a shot of vodka and you'd eat a couple pickles so you look like literally you ate pickles it wasn't the pickle juice or anything like that but like you know when Alyssa was making that cocktail that like I love like I said I love that stringent acidity so that vinegar and the pickle juice that big to me, I love that yeah. we, yes uh -huh. so that, Alyssa that, that stuff cuts right through the, the like the liquor and the flavor and uh, I don't know I, I 
I love the I love how it complements, you know, that kind of rounded out bourbon feel. Well, yeah. listen, you might remember exactly. a joint called uh, Marion's down on the Bowery. Yes, of course. So I bartended at Marion's for five or six years back in the okay. late 90s and early 2000s. And we had a pickled martini, which was a martini with a little bit of pickle juice. Um, mm -hmm. Just subtle, very subtle. So it sounds very similar to what you're thinking. Yeah, no, absolutely. I did um, on a menu maybe like uh, 10 years ago, one of my first bar manager jobs, I did a pickled, uh, pickled juice martini and people loved it. I did like an option of vodka or gin. People mostly went with vodka, <laughs> and they loved it. Yeah, I love it, man. It's and it's funny, Jonathan. I was about to ask you what your favorite customer was, and you went right into it. So that was picture perfect. <laughs> yeah, and that big guy with the picklebacks is still alive and will live to 125 probably because of yeah. his habits. And I respect because that. his liver, his liver is wait for it, pickled. How you Hi, doing? Bro. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'll be here all night. <laughs> Jonathan's from Bridgeport. I got to wear my White Sox hat for this one. Yes! There we go. Get it, boy. <laughs> Alyssa, who's your favorite person that you've ever served, celebrity-wise? Who, who, who's the coolest person you ever met from behind the bar? Um, you know what? I can't say I've actually served a lot of celebrities, but I will say Charles Barkley was interesting. <laughs> I drank with him. I've faces the names in Midtown, and he's a hell of a time. Did you really? He's a hell of a time. Oh, he's a Tito's guy. Is my he? old man. I got yeah. my old man used to bartend in Milwaukee, and Barkley would come in every time he played. Uh, would play in town. Would always hold a bottle of champagne and tip a hundred bucks every time. He was a very good tipper, yeah, I, for sure. I will say that, did but it was Tito's soda. It did was he Tito's snort soda. the Tito's or? <laughs> he did not the Tito's. I'm really happy You told that. him, you're like, Charles, you've got to try this thing everybody's doing downtown. We're snorting everybody's Tito's. Doing. But I will, I, seriously, if he had started snorting it off my bar, I wouldn't be surprised if many other people followed suit right after him. Like, people were super excited that he was there. So I would not have been surprised. How great is it, too, like, one of the, like, it was always awesome to get, like, a big tipper when I, when I'd started out bartending. I'll never forget. Oh, hell yeah. I, I was, so, like, when I bartended at three clubs in Hollywood, you know, I was there from five, and the next person didn't get until nine. So, from five to nine, I'm there by myself. Like, no bar back, no nothing. And if someone wanted to come in, they had to knock on the door, you'd slide the latch, and then see if it was safe. Then you'd open the door and let it in. So, there's this bang on the door one time, and I slide it open. And this has to be, like, 2003. And it's Joe Rogan. So it's Joe, Joe Rogan and these two, two girls. And they come into the bar and they sit at the bar and they lock out. It's just the three of us, or the four of us, the three of them and me. And we're talking and talking and talking. And, you know, it was just an awesome time. And it was just like ball busting and stuff. And Joe goes to close the tab. And I, he, I show him how to lock the door. And I look at the receipt. And he tipped me 100 bucks, you know, on like a $40 tab. And I, like, like you know, for like a 24 year old kid back in 2003, that was like, that was like a, a game changer, you know? Yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's just exciting, you know? Yeah. That's fun, man. But um, yes, um, Alyssa, what, yes. uh, we're, we're going to go off a little bit because we're still having okay. a hard time getting uh, Mr. Larry Fryers into the room. <laughs> so um, your first cocktail is fantastic. You want to jump into your uh, second one with us? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's do a shaken cocktail. And also, speaking of big tippers, can you share your social media account with us? Oh, yeah. Where you're, uh, we could potentially give you those vir lovely virtual well, kids. That would be <laughs> your Venmo, right? right? Yeah, that's the, that's the social media handle I was looking for. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, this week, I was telling Tommy earlier that I'll be partnering with some people to put together some boxes for people in the hospitality industry. And um, with the money that I make here, I'm going to put a little something extra in those boxes. That's amazing. Awesome. So uh, it's Good. funny. Also, while well, Alyssa, Alyssa's getting prepped up, we've had, um, we've had a few people on here. And I've been doing a few lives as well. And I think that it's cool that the... Hey, Karen. I, I always ask the people what their favorite bar and where they want to go to next. And everyone's saying how they can't wait to go to Alyssa's bar. So every industry person that I talk to about this and ask is saying, I want to go to August Laura and see my friends and give my friends a hug. 
So I'm super to ha happy to have you on here, Alyssa, because that's that's uh, really awesome to hear. I'm happy to be here. And like, that's just that's nice to hear that people don't forget about you, you know? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Can't wait to be back in the bars, man. Can't I wait. do. If you're going to see me disappear for a second. I do have to grab a phone charger so that I don't lose you guys. And then I'll be there we right go. back. I'm a magician, yeah. too. You know, you know, what's so funny. What you just said, Tommy, too, is is that, you know, all these people are saying, what's the next bar you're going to go to? And it's, it's going to be August Laura. And I think, you know, I, I've always said, find yourself a job you love, a woman you love, and a bar you love, and you'll always be happy. Um, and it's so cool, because, like, in Los Angeles, I have, like, my go-to bar. I don't really, like, venture out. I like, I like going, like, not to be cheesy, but, like, cheers. Like, you want to go where everyone knows your name. You want to go where you're, like, oh, you <laughs> and it's the same thing. I go to Chicago, and it's like I have that one spot in my neighborhood that I'm going to go to. And I think people, you know, it's important for people to have – those regular bars in in different cities you know it kind of it kind of brings a piece of home to you when you're somewhere that isn't home absolutely and you guys just got pushed back to what july right you guys are locked down till um oh dude i don't even know if we're going back to july because i mean we were shooting uh in toronto but i mean with with international travel and everything i mean who knows it could be august it could be september we have no idea it's so wild man so wild <laughs> Oh, Alyssa, poof, you're back. Yeah. Look at that. I am, but I'm trying to get my phone to stand up with the charger in the bottom. Wait, okay. All right. There we go. There we go. We're making right. moves there here, Ted. We We're making moves. <laughs> am I kind of tilted? With a, with a lovely Wyoming small batch, being a weeded whiskey, 68 corn, 20 wheat, 12 barley, what are you whipping up for us today? All right. So we are going to do kind of a play on a gold rush. Um, so we'll do an ounce and a half of the small batch. We got a little honey syrup here. So we'll go half an ounce of the honey syrup. We're gonna use Dubonnet, which is uh, one of my favorite French aperitifs. And then a little pointy mess to give it some body. Lovely. What's the flavor profile of Dubonnet? I don't think I've ever really um, so it's a French style aperitif. So personally, I think it drinks more like a light vermouth than an aperitif, but that is the uh, category that it's in. Gotcha. Look at those elbows. That's, that's proper technique of shaking. I, I like that's good. That's good. It's good elbow. <laughs> I've done it for a few years. I don't know. I'm not, not going to age myself, but a few. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, is this the style of cocktail that would be served in the bars that you were working at in college in Chicago? Uh, no. You know what's crazy is uh, when I was bartending, that was, that was pre-mixology boom. So... <laughs> It was like, you know, just vodka tonic, gin and tonic, Jack and Coke, or like a draft beer, you know? I mean, at the, when I was bartending at Campanile, you know, uh, for brunches and stuff like that, it was definitely an older clientele. So we were making things like Ramos Fizz and, and some, some drinks like, you know, Rusty Nails and stuff that like the, the youth weren't really too keen on. Excellent. <laughs> Rusty Nails is, is a great one. My, um... I, me and my, uh, now is a good one. Hey, Larry, there he is. Beautiful. What's happening, buddy? <laughs> Fuck me, this computer shit's just now. <laughs> oh, I had hell. some problems, too. I feel you. And, yeah. that, and that is Larry Fryers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier to take a slap on the face, let me tell you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so... I love it. You just came in hot right with there. You're coming in <laughs> off of, you're coming off of Alyssa's second cocktail. She was making her twist. 
Hi, Larry. That's the Hello, Shane. And Alyssa. And uh, I've already introduced Jonathan and Alyssa to the rest of the crew. Larry is our third guest today. So Larry is, again, pulling this all together with that blue collar personality, is <laughs> part of a wonderful carpenters union here in New York City and with a side gig as a professional fighter. And I had the pleasure of meeting Larry at Champs Boxing Club uh, out in New Rochelle. I think we're wearing the same shirt, right? Uh, the same brand, yeah, yeah just not, okay. not the same shirt. <laughs> but uh, Larry is a very, very, very talented fighter. Um, that good old, as you can see by his accent, he's from New Jersey, but has that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so coming from Ireland, there is nothing like the Irish fighters and like the past New York Irish fighters like John Duddy. Um, he's got that warrior instinct just like John and like uh, Mickey Ward. And he's my second bar stool today next in, in Alyssa's bar. So it's Jonathan, uh, Larry, and myself sitting down with Alyssa. But Alyssa, if you want to finish telling us about your drink and Larry, I would love to hear about what you got going on and how you almost knocked out your phone the way you do with one of your opponents. <laughs> I mean, I finished my drink, so we're happy to hear uh, how you knock people out, Larry. Beautiful. <laughs> Hold on, I want to I I start this off. Hey, Larry, when's the last yeah. time you knocked Tommy Moriello out? <laughs> uh, we, we, we've never got that far, thankfully, you know what I mean? We've never had to test that theory out. <laughs> Thank God uh, for thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, we stay on the same page. <laughs> Um, luckily, if, if Larry and I were to spar, if I didn't get him with the first punch, I'm done. Because his cardio <laughs> conditioning is insane. I'd be huffing and puffing in the corner as he's lighting me up. <laughs> but it's, I'm happy that we're using Wyoming as well. And I wanted to bring Larry in because, Larry, I wanted to, that you to tell them about what happened with you, man. You were one of the first people that I saw get truly affected by this situation. Uh, a small holiday for the Irish Brethren being St. Yeah. Patrick's Day, and you were fighting on a small card in Boston during for the parade with uh, Dropkick Murphys, for those who yeah. know it, massive following, and a huge card to be on. And Larry was going to be awesome and have, he was going to have the Wyoming whiskey on his trunks and rock it out for us, and the rug got pulled out from under him. So let, let us know what it's like, Larry. What's it like having the rug pulled out from you, training that hard for a fight, and having it canceled two to three days before no, it, it, it's definitely no fun, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, you know, I had put myself through a eight-week training camp, you know, and what goes in along with that is, you know, you're training twice a day, you know, you're dieting, you're, you're cutting all the weight, you know, and on top of that too, you know, usually around two weeks out from the fight, I usually send my family away, you know, they have to go away and stay up uh, upstate. My wife's sister lets them, lets them come up and stay with her for the last two weeks of it, you know, because... You know, you're just you're just in the zone for the fight, and all you all you're thinking about is a fight. You know, and with the weight cut and the, and the training and everything else, you know, you're just not the happiest person to be around either. So it's it, it's safer for the marriage that 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 her and my son go up, go upstate for a while and let me let me just focus on the fighting. You know, but um, yeah, no, that 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 was the first time now something like that has happened to me where the night before the weigh-in. You know, I get the phone call just saying, "Yo, sorry, you know, this pandemic has, has hit hard and uh, the show's cancelled. So there's eight weeks, eight weeks of, uh, I took eight weeks off work. You know what I mean? I I train, I train, I train like a lunatic for eight solid weeks and then it's just for nothing. You know what I mean? It really, it really is a, a kick in the balls, to be honest. You know, you, you've dedicated your life for the last eight weeks doing nothing but eating clean, living clean and just like that, then it's just pulled on. The worst part about it is, you know, there's no, um, you know, <laughs> you don't get paid. That's that, that's it, you know what I mean? So you took eight weeks off work, and on top of that too, the, the check that was going to come in to cover that is, is wiped out, you know? So, yeah, yeah, no, it hits it hits all aspects of life, you know, and that, that, that that's what being a fighter is, you know. Most people would probably be under the assumption that being a boxer, you know, is... Um, you know, it's just ah, it's just a sport. It's just it's just something you do. But no, not when you're not when you're doing it for a living. You know what I mean? Because uh, you put you, you put your life, life on hold. No, you don't. You don't play boxing. Like you, you you put your life on hold. Like pretty much, you know. It, there's eight weeks now. I've 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 stopped the income coming into the house. You know, because I took the time off to just train full time, and you're banking on that check after the fight. You know, and 
that's it, you know, and it's not just my life, you know, it's my wife's life and my kids' lives, you know. They're, you know, when I'm in a training camp, you know, I can't be the, I can't be the fun, the fun dad that I usually am because, you know, I'm putting myself through this rigorous training and on top of that, when I'm cutting weight, you know, that, that changes your whole personality. And it changes Actually, the your wife, your wife was pregnant during this camp as well, right? Your second yeah. child came along. Yeah, my wife was pregnant, you know what I mean? And as I say, like that 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 that's two personalities clashing, you know what I mean? A pregnant woman and, and, and a, a hungry man. So it's not it's not a great combination, you know. It's de- definitely not a great combination. But thankfully, thankfully, you know, my wife she she she's an amazing woman and, and she just she stands by me one hundred percent of the time, you know what I mean? And only for her I couldn't I couldn't actually do what I'm doing because she she takes full control, you know what I mean? She she takes my son, she she makes sure I get the rest and everything that I need, you know. So it's you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a gift to have her, like you know, because like it is true what they say, boxing boxing's a lonely man sport, you know what I mean? Nice. And and it is true when you think about it, like really I would advise any single single person that's that's doing this for a living, just stay single till you're finished. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it, it's tough when you're trying to juggle when you're trying to juggle a marriage, a family, you know, bills. It's it, it's it's tough when you're trying to fit this in. Like, there's only one Adrian, and not everyone's yeah. going to be Adrian. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, Rocky. Rocky had a spot on, so he did. He he really knew what he was talking about when he made that film. You know? And, and what's, are, the ahead, gyms, are the gyms? Are there? Are, are the fighting gyms open in New York right now? No. 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 That's the same. Like oh, my everything's closed out in LA too. Jonathan yeah, no. is a huge fight fan, by the way, and also trains and is, gets involved. And if I must say, he's been looking pretty fine on the mitts lately and getting his hands down. So I was looking forward to putting you guys together as well. Thank you. Good thank stuff, you. Good stuff. What's the, no, what's the timeline for the gyms in New York? Phase uh, two. It's, um, yeah. Phase two, yeah. You're, you're, looking, you're looking probably closer to the end, end of June before the gyms start right. opening. Yeah, I think the gyms are, if we're talking about New York, I think they're phase three along with the restaurants and bars. Oh, they are. I thought they were, okay, cool. So yeah, yeah, I'm well, pretty sure. I don't, I'm, I don't know, but I think so. But yeah, I, I, I completely understand too with hungry man and pregnant wife because that's been our whole pregnancy with my wife and I, but I'm not cutting <laughs> weight. I'm just a chubby kid. <laughs> Speaking of being a chubby kid, um, Jonathan is a really fun Instagram account to follow. Jonathan, I want to know your best meals that you've cooked throughout here. And tell us a little bit about your time that how you were on Chopped and how that opened up a whole new door for you as well. Yeah, so I'm I'm always been a foodie. You know, I come from my my mom's Italian, and I grew up in the with a bunch of Italian women in the house. So uh, I got involved in cooking at a young age, whether it was you know sautéing onions and garlic or boiling water for pasta and stuff. And um, when I came out to LA, you know, I was working, I was doing catering for Neil Fraser and Grace, and then I was working at Campanile for Mark. But that was like my first taste of like fine dining. And, uh, and then I started hanging out with all these different chefs and, you know, like Michael Voltaggio is one of my best friends, Andrew Zimmer and Adam Richman. And uh, I remember I was, we were like talking with Food Network about, you know, possibly having me be a judge for Chopped Jr. So my publicist called me and she goes, so we got Chopped. I'm going to send you all this stuff to like go over. So I'm like in the bathroom brushing my teeth. And I'm reading this email and it's like, let us know if your client's going to bring his own knives. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what do I need my knives for? I'm like, I'm, I'm going to judge Chop Jr. And then I read and my, my publicist pulled a prank on me and she actually got me to compete on, on Celeb Chop, the Star Power Tournament. That's so, all the switcheroo. <laughs> yeah, I was fucking horrified. Um, so part of my French. Uh, it works. So um, I want to fly to New York. And I think that's when we were at, uh, didn't we, we, we met up at the Standard. And that's we, I, yeah, Ashley and I were giving you the full court press. I asked what happened. You we were like, listen, man, I saw an odd exposure. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so I went to New York and uh, it was crazy, dude. Like, you know, you're, you're up at, f- you know, you're, you're on stage at like five in the morning and you're like preparing like these dishes, like the appetizer dish you're cooking at like seven in the morning. And it's just super hectic. Uh, Everything worked out well. You know, I was competing on behalf of my charity, the Children's Tumor Foundation, which was, it was great. It gave it a lot of exposure. And then once I did that, I was like, you know, I, I got to cook more at home. So uh, now it's, now don't get me wrong. It's a little different 
like when you're forced to cook because every fucking restaurant's closed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if I have to wash one more dish in my place, I'm going to start shattering shit. Uh, <laughs> but no, but I've really been getting into stuff. I, I've been doing a lot of like Asian cuisine. Uh, you know, like you said, Tom, I love fishing and I've been bringing some fish home and throw them in the freezer and then cleaning them out and doing some kind of Chinese uh, style steaming fish and uh, sizzling oils and stuff like that. Fried rice. I have perfected my fried rice. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, big, big fan of that. Um, <laughs> what else? I've been doing like, you know, my bolognese is coming along, doing some Italian stuff. Bolognese so, is, is one of my favorite dishes as well. So I love it. So that, that, that's why you have to train the way that you do is because you're cooking some amazing, some amazing gems up there as well. Yeah. It was funny because my fiance, Melissa's like every time I'd cook, I'd like make a bag of pasta. And she's like, you know, you don't have to make the whole bag every time. And I was like, you never grew up in an Italian household. <laughs> you always make the whole bag. I feel that. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, like when a doctor goes, so when you eat pizza, how much do you have? It's like, all of it? I'm like, what do you, yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> Exactly. Every pizza I'm is Italian a perfect by way pizza of New Jersey. You do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey, Jonathan. Yes, sir. While you were on Chop, did uh, any of the celebrity chefs uh, trash talk you? Um, n they didn't really trash talk me. I mean, there were a couple like zingers they had to throw in there just for some drama. But like, I still keep in touch with all like with Scott Scott Cohen. It's a buddy of mine. I text with him and Alex Garnaschelli and um, Amanda Freitag. Um, but there was really no trash talk. And it was like, it was more because like, there was like this ball busting camaraderie in between takes. So then like when they were finally filming, like this guy I was just busting balls with now like gives me a zinger. He's like, this isn't very good. <laughs> when they, then when they cut, he would like laugh and be like, gotcha. You know? Oh man, yeah. It's like, that's what we want. We want the dirt, man. It's like, Jonathan Sadowski, your fried rice is trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it, I mean, there wasn't a lot of dirt because, you know, I won. So. <laughs> I won. That's amazing. Jonathan, I, it, it, it's funny you mentioned that everybody on the show is, it's like seven in the morning, you guys start cooking because now that you mention it, everybody looks so tired in the, at the, especially at the beginning of that show. I'm telling you, I was on stage at 5 a.m. I was, my pickup was like at 445 and we were on the stage by like 5, 5, now, 15. As an actor, you're probably a little used to that, but the chefs they have on five in the morning is like, yeah, uh, it, was, it, was that's crazy. it was crazy. And then also it's like, you know, I wasn't done till like, I mean, I was there from like five in the morning till midnight. Like, cause you'd have to do, you know, cause not to keep bringing it up again, but I won. <laughs> 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 so when, when you win, you, I, had, I had to do a, uh, I had to do an exit interview because you know I was a chop champion. <laughs> so during my exit interview, I had to talk for like two hours about winning every round. <laughs> you know? uh, but fantastic. it was, it was a hoot, man. I would, I would do that again in a heartbeat. And it's funny because you know Brian and Michael Voltaggio are, they're like two of my closest friends, and uh, Brian and Michael they competed against each other during Top Chef. They were the two finalists and Michael wound up winning. So then when I won, when I, when I won Chopped, every time we hang out now, I'll always be like, man, that's crazy. I was like, Brian, you're the only person who hasn't won a cooking show here. <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> that's fantastic. And on, with that as well, I know that you've been, uh, you invited me to come on with a few, but my work, I don't know how to work from home. I'm terrible at it. And I haven't been able to join on, but your your training regiments have been pretty solid as well. And I wanted to ask, um, it's a three-part question for everybody on. I wanted to know, Larry and Jonathan, what you guys are doing at home. I also wanted to challenge you to a push-up contest with Lacey, the two-time Ohio State powerlifting champion from Entrington, USA. <laughs> um, and... Yes. With, 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 what, with what you and Larry are doing, I want to know after I take care of my body and feel good and have my muscles going, how to ruin it and what cocktail to have with Alyssa after. So, Larry, I'd like to start with you. How are you keeping yourself fit and keeping yourself fight ready for um, during, during quarantine? Running. Running and, uh, running and shadow boxing and skipping. That's it. You know, I, uh, I have – cheers, I just – Every morning I get up and just run. That's it. You know, I got to do something because I, I'm one of them. You know, I, I find 
my weight, my weight is uh, is out of control. You know, as I say, you probably talk, heard Ryan talk about it in the gym. You know what I mean? Like yeah. shed four, forty pounds for a fight isn't isn't ideal. You know, and that's that's just because, like I said, like I hadn't boxed, I hadn't boxed in years before I finally actually got back into it. You know, and I was a hundred and ninety pounds. You know, so I was I was pretty big, and then. You know, as you know, I, I fight at 140 now, you know, so I dropped 50 pounds to get back into the sport. Like, so, you know, my body fluctuates. So like that, I have to, I have to a year round just watch what I'm eating. So since, since I've been in quarantine, you know, it's, uh, it's been tough, you know what I mean? Because I just, you know, you're at home, you're bored and all I want to do is eat. You know what I mean? That's all I want to do is eat and they keep eating and I've, I've had to keep to a strict, as if I was training for a fight, I've just had to keep to a strict regime because if I were to follow suit and just, just give in to this quarantine, I'd be walking about now about 200 pounds. You know what I mean? So Welcome to heavyweight, just, baby. We're, yeah, we're always recruiting. That's, <laughs> that's why I wish I had been six foot high. You know what I mean? Heavyweight would have been perfect for me for the way I eat. But <laughs> look, at the same time, I've just been training every day. You know what I mean? Just that's get up cool, in the morning, man. run the roads. Know. The road work is the most important. It's, it's I'm too, oh, yeah. I'm too much. I'm too much of a patriot to run because you know we're American. These colors don't matter. Neither do I. But <laughs> I, 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 that's 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 awesome, dude. It's been tough. Jonathan, what have you what have you been doing? What, what's your what's your training regimen been like? I know you, you do a lot of the boxing. Yeah, but I have like an inverse relationship um, with it. I'm I'm like opposite of Larry. So I was walking around 201, and. Um, Cause I love like, I love heavy weight training. Um, and my, I, you know, I don't do a whole lot of cardio other than like jujitsu, kickboxing and boxing. Um, but since the quarantine, I've actually plummeted. Uh, whereas I'm walking around 187 right now. Um, because I just, I, I have no secrets. <laughs> no, dude, it, it's just, I, I've lost so much muscle mass from, from not being able to lift weights. Like I don't have a gym at my house. So, you know, you can do as many push-ups as you want, but you're not going to, you're not going to put on muscle mass from doing push-ups. You're going to lean out. Um, so it's been hard for me because, uh, like I, 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 I try to gain weight. I like, I love, I love being big. It, it, it kind of grounds me. I feel, you know, I feel solid and, um, it's like a mental thing for me. So now I feel like I'm withering away. Like literally I've lost like 13 pounds and I'm, I feel weak and I just like, I can't wait for the gym to open again just to get back in there and, and crush it a little bit. But you other than that, videos you know, in your life, man, some, uh, some Italian, some Italian uh, beef from, from Chicago. <laughs> Dude, I'm making it for dinner tonight. <laughs> yes. I swear, God, I swear to God, I'm making Portillo's in my crock pot as we speak. That's exciting. No, I'm really jealous. That's, that's amazing. No, I swear, my brother, my brother sent me a kit of Italian sausage and Italian uh, beef. And I have the last of it right now. I'm making, I'm, I, I've been cooking it for the, like the last hour and a half, so it's gonna be it's gonna be perfect once we're done here. It's gotta smell lovely inside. <laughs> oh, well. just beef, beef juice. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, I started running. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I can't compete with like with Larry and running like that. Uh, I mean, I'm doing like a m 1 1.2, 1.5 miles in the morning, and I'm just I'm so rickety. You know, I'm 40 years old now, and it's just the old gray mare it's like i i run a mile and my you know i i have fake joints in both of my big toes and my knees are hurting me and my like my neck hurts me i have chronic back pain so the impact is really hard for me which is also why i like the gym because i like i love doing the rowing machine there and or just like a, a hiking on a steep treadmill um but yeah dude it's like when i don't work out i drop weight which is yeah that's kind of where i'm at so Larry, any, any tips as well from you? It's maintaining your weight. It's your life, obviously. And what, what could you, what advice can you give to other people to try to keep themselves in check? Cause I find my way to the second and third helping at the dinner table all throughout quarantine. So yeah. um, any, any tips to try to, to try to stay, stay, uh, stay ahead of the game in terms That's of the the quarantine yeah. weight? That's pretty much it. Discipline, I like you know, as you say, when you go for your second or third helping, that that's you know, stick it to one. That's all you gotta do. You know what I mean? As 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 fucking hard as it is, and and trust me, it's you know what I mean. Like 
in terms of fights, there's there's nothing on the on the horizon for me at the minute. You know what I mean? Because because of this pandemic, you know, nobody knows when the fights are going to start back up. Nobody knows. You know, it could be next year. They might have to wait till the vaccine. You know, they're talking about doing small shows, but like Jesus Christ, that's that's a long way off. You know, so for me at the minute, you know, I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just I have to get mentally focused that that there could be a fight at any time, you know what I mean? And that's, that's helped me stay disciplined and helped me just sticking to that one portion, you know, and not going back for seconds. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. It's all about, it's all about your, you know, if you're trying to watch your weight, it's all about your calorie intake, you know what I mean? Don't be consuming more than you're burning, you know, because let's be honest, you're not, if you're consuming more than you're burning, you're not going to be losing anything, you know? Nice. It's all about just, just balancing your meals, you know, if you, Eat, eat, eat less, but eat plenty at the same time. You know what I mean. So have four or five meals a day, but have them portioned out. You know what I mean. If you're if you're like me, and you constantly want to be eating, well then divide it up. You know, portion, portion your portions out, and make it last the whole day. You know, instead of having just your breakfast and then a big dinner and then maybe something small in the evening, portion it out to where you have breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner, and then an evening snack. You know, it's all about just. But man, mentally, that's 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 where it comes in. There, you know, mentally is the the big thing. You know, it's if you have it in your head that you're gonna stick to this regime that you set yourself, and it's all about setting goals. You know, at the start of the week, just set yourself a goal for for every day. Just use twenty four hours. That's it. You know what I mean? Don't be thinking, oh, I'm gonna do this for a month, and then after two days, you're you're cursing yourself and fuck this. Why did I agree to this? Just do it for twenty four hours. You know what I mean? Say right for the day, I'm only gonna eat this, 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 and that's it. You know, that's awesome. and just just stick to that regime. And Alyssa, when I, I don't want to listen to a word that Larry just said, and I want to destroy my body. <laughs> what would I, yeah. What, what, what would be, it it what does would, make me feel kind of bad about myself, but it's alright. But, but obviously, Larry's absolutely right in following that routine, and it's something that I learned to do at Champs, which has been awesome. And, Champs mm-hmm. Boxing at New Rochelle, if anyone's in the New York area, get involved there. You can come see Larry train at any day during the week, which is really cool to see a world, see a guy who has competed for world titles and is nationally ranked. Yeah. But um, it's, it, it's that routine is huge and something that I've been trying to keep up with as well. But for, for a cheat meal after, uh, so Jonathan not being able to cook portillos, uh, Larry Facing out his meals and spreading everything thin and staying disciplined and running his miles. What would be a cheat meal? What would we come to August Laura to and splurge on? I do five dollar burgers. I don't know if <laughs> the question was directed at me. But yes, as I showed you before. I'll take three. <laughs> <laughs> five dollar burger. I, I love that. I, I absolutely love that silhouette thing. That is awesome. Yeah, I mean, like you get all the food groups in there. So it's, it's- a- it's like, do you want to go to Carl's Jr. and pay six bucks, or do you want to go to August Laura and pay five? Exactly. You want to go to August Laura and pay five. August. It's like seven minute eggs or six minute eggs. <laughs> um, the six minute egg or the three minute egg. <laughs> Alyssa, are you a fight fan at all? Do you like any sports? I, you know what? I'm not. I played sports um, when I was younger. I don't really watch sports. I don't know. To me, maybe it's it's just one of those things that it's such a big commitment. Like if I were to like really start following something, it's such a big commitment that um, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but I don't have a lot of time for. No, I'm, that's why I like pro wrestling. I'm with you. I'm, yeah. <laughs> the least, least amount of commitment I could be to a professional sport. It's awesome. It's <laughs> yeah, I mean, I used to love the Ultimate Warrior. But <laughs> Shake those ropes, baby. Exactly. Shake those ropes. <laughs> but yeah i mean with that I, you have so many cool stuff you have that downstairs room that you've done the podcast with and whatnot but um i want yeah. to just close the show of just seeing like what you guys are looking forward to most um jonathan and larry your favorite fights that you want to see that are coming up um and Alyssa, just your favorite spot that you want to go to um how it else we could possibly help the community if we could go watch one of these dream fights that larry and jonathan are about to say uh just just how how, how do we help how do we give back to the community with stuff that we love um i mean 
my favorite fight that I'm looking forward to. Like, I want to see Canelo and Billy Joe Saunders fight. I think that's like, that would be epic. Um, I mean, before the car accident, Earl Spence versus, you know, Bud Crawford, that would have been amazing as well. Very disappointing uh, that didn't happen. Oh, so upset that didn't happen. Um, and then I think there's some great stuff going on in the MMA world right now. I think Justin Gaethje's last performance was pretty dominant over, you know, a, probably a future Hall of Famer and Tony Ferguson. And um, a zombie. How did he take those? Jesus. He, he put on a <laughs> clinic. And I, I'm eager to see what, you know, him versus could be. Uh, I'm eager to see what, what happens with Connor next. I think Connor looked pretty good at 170. Um, I don't know if he's going to stay at that weight. You know, when he's fighting guys that are cutting to that weight, and he's kind of beefing up to that weight. Like, I don't know if he can handle Usman right now, but but I think him versus Masvidal would be a good fight. Um, I, I mean, see, I'm eager to see Connor at 155. You know, I'd like to see him fight Dustin Poirier at 155, and I'd like to see the winner of that get the winner of the again. So that's that's kind of what I'm excited about. That's good stuff. Larry, right, what about you, bud? What are you what are you looking forward to? I'm not looking forward to that. I, Anthony Joshua and uh, Tyson Fury. You know Same what I mean? Man. I think that that that'll be a mouth mouthwatering fight. You know, and I I see I see Fury Fury winning it easy, but at the same time, I think it'll still be the build up and everything else that goes with it will make it will make it a great fight. Uh, the Lumachenko and Lopez. You know, oh yeah, that's, I about that one. That's gonna be a hell of a fight, you know what I mean? You've got the young the young dog coming up, you know, and he's, he's he, he wants them titles, you know, and but I think I think for that Lumachenko's just he, he has too much about him, too much experience. I think he, he's probably just gonna nick it, you know. And let's see, who else is done? Oh, there's a big there's a big heavyweight fight that was supposed to happen over in England, um John Joyce against uh, Dubious. Yeah, that was going. To, that was going to be a hell of a fight. You know what I mean? Like they're two up and coming, undefeated heavyweights. That that was going to be a hell of a fight. So, you know, I, I I'm just hoping at some stage in the future there will be fights. You know what I mean? And hopefully I can get in and get hit in the face once or twice. You know, because fuck it, I miss it. You know, that's it. I just, I just want to get back in and get doing it. You know. In the comments, uh, Tojo says he wants to see Lethal Larry versus TikTok Tommy. Listen, set, send a check. Send a check. I'll take five yeah. shots to Wyoming, and I'll let Larry wail on me for four rounds. <laughs> Tommy, you would too. That's, I'm, I'm with it. That's, that's, you know what? I'll do it for a small car. We'll do it in the basement of August Laura, and we'll stream it live. On Absolutely. YouTube. I'll take out the pool table. Don't worry about it. I got the yeah, exactly. I got the space. You're, Let's go. You got to take Tommy, old Wyoming Moriello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told Joe we get it. We can't talk about Fight Club. That is the first rule. You, you broke the first rule. And what's cool, I'm wearing this shirt. Larry uh, works with these guys, and he's gotten sponsored by them. It's called Contender Clothing. They got some really cool stuff. And uh, going to social distance, a little twist off of Rocky. But proceeds are actually going to uh, fighters that like Larry that lost some big paydays. So something cool to support. And uh, I spoke with Larry as well, and he wanted to give back to one of the charities that to, to feed some people. So I thought that was really cool on his part. Jonathan is huge into giving more. Jonathan, if you want to plug your charity as well, uh, yeah. the guys that you've been working with. So I've been working uh, as a spokesperson for the Children Tumor Foundation for the last five years now. Um, we actually have a huge telethon coming up on May 17th. Um, we have Alec Baldwin, Martin Short, Howie Mandel, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, like Jesse McCartney's performing, Chef Michael Voltaggio is doing a cooking demo. Uh, it's going to be great. It's on the 17th from uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, come on in. You can find out more at ctf.org. Uh, and we hope to see you there. Awesome. And, um, and Alyssa, for, for our industry, Outside yes. of what's currently going on with August Laura, I know you got some really cool stuff coming on. Um, how can we support local New York businesses such as yours? What what do we need to do to go out and get there? I mean, if you if you see the businesses open and they're still doing to go stuff, um, the biggest thing is ordering directly from the business because unfortunately the third parties um, take a lot of money away from the business. So if there's something that you really love, make an effort to actually just call the place. I know it's not as convenient as using an app, but make the effort to call the place or go through their Instagram and message them and directly connect with your small business that, that are local to you, that you love. 
Excellent. And for the next phase of your business, what are we going to see with August Laura? What's the new norm going to be? I know you're going to be starting off your uh, to-go cocktails again shortly. Um, you want mm -hmm. to give a little sneak hint of what that's going to be? <sighs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All the Jersey um, you know, All the Jersey still, It's still sort of in a phase where I'm figuring it out. I, I have a lot of ideas down and what it will look like when we reopen. But the rules change on us every day. So it's just it's still a matter of navigating that. But just know that we will be here. And when we are here, I hope that you come and support we 100% will. Uh, Larry is going to he's going to double down. He's going to have a cheeseburger post fight. Jonathan's yeah. going to come to town, and we're going to bring Perfect. Jeremy in to use his Connecticut budget to pay for the evening. It's going to be fantastic. But, <laughs> um, but guys, um, this is so awesome. I'm going to keep it running, Jonathan. I know that you got to run. You got some other yep. stuff to do. Thank you so much for being a part of this and coming and sharing what's going on. Um, I really wanted to have that blue collar feel. You know, like. We're all successful people in what we do, but we all do it in a, in a different way. And I think that it's absolutely fantastic. So thank you, Jonathan, for coming on. Alyssa. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Jonathan Sadowski, the Sadowski drink. I got you. Yeah. I will say August Laura. The, the, Italian, <laughs> the Italians that like to drink vinegar. Very I good. love it. I, love it. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. Pleasure to awesome. Bye. Outside. Um, Alyssa, thank you so much. Um, Larry, you're an absolute rock star, man. Thank you so much. I, I apologize for your technical difficulties signing on in. <laughs> thank you, Tom Johnson, for being behind the scenes and helping us on out with that. Um, we still got a few more people on, so I'm going to keep it up and running. Um, any other questions sure. for anybody else? Lacey, any challenges that you want us to pass by to Sadowski? I know that he's signed off now, but... I'm setting it up. It's going to be, Larry's going to beat me up at August Laurie, and you're going to, you're going to go against the desk. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did not it's sign up for that location. challenge. Undisclosed location. <laughs> undisclosed, excuse me. My apologies. Sorry, Tyler Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay, then. I know he has a puppy, too. We'll have a puppy push up. Mm -hmm. uh, That'll work. <laughs> but, um, any, any other questions for Larry or for Alyssa? Hit the fuck up. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I don't know. But I liked it. <laughs> well, folks, I'm actually going to have to shoot off. I've got to get back to Daddy Daycare. So, everybody, thanks very much for the opportunity. And it was great talking to you. And uh, look, as I said, we'll be in touch. Thank you nice so to much, meet you, Larry. Man. Nice to meet you. Have a great day. Bye. I'm going to go bye ahead bye. and uh, sign it on off then. Alyssa, you're a rock yep. star. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, see you guys it's next time. It's been a pleasure.